Hi, and welcome to the global overview of the Ventus 5 user interface. When you start Ventus 5, it will start with the project browser window. Here you can create or open a project. Per default, Ventus will then ask you to open an existing scene, or if you click Cancel, Ventus will create a new scene. If you click the upper left icon, this will open the project properties. Here you can change or set project-related properties like the graphics format, etc. If you click the project's name, you can change the project properties here as well, as project maintenance and export, close and switch the project. With the scene tab, you open and create new scenes. If you open two scenes, you can switch between them by clicking on their labels. You can also export as a presentation or scene archive. Also, you will find the scene statistics here, click on this, and you get detailed information about the used resources for the current scene. The load safe options offer you settings like should the open scene dialog pop up, start with a blank scene, and a very handy feature, the autosave every some minutes. View. With the view, you can change the layouts or better show height windows and panels. Click on Properties to show the Properties panel. Toolbox shows the toolbox. You can simply close these panels as usual. Also new in V5 is that you can switch between different layouts. We already created some layouts for you, which can be accessed and switched here in the upper right part. Here you see tabs for the design, logic, animate and data view, which are factory-made presets to have your layouts arranged in a way to focus on the actual task you are doing. You can save and load your settings and layouts as a workspace. Put that file on your USB stick and load your environment on another workstation. The pixel snoop or color picker, which is also new in V5, can be found and used from the top panel as well as from any other color properties tool like the color wheels. You can also pick colors from the desktop, a reference image or video. While you drag and drop the color snoop, you can use your mouse wheel to increase and decrease the snooping area. This will get the average of the area. The area is indicated by the pulsing orange rectangle. The color values are displayed in RGB and hex. You can find control of the snooper also with the arrow keys. If you release the mouse button, the values are copied into your clipboard. To enable the dynamic help bar, you can click on the question mark in the upper right part, then on dynamic help or using the shortcut shift and one. This will show a dynamic help bar in the bottom of Ventus 5. As soon as you hover over a node or element, a short help text is displayed. Use F1 to bring up more help and information. The bookmark system, very handy. Simply click on a node and then the add bookmark icon. As soon as you create a bookmark, the bookmark system will show up and you see the created bookmarks. Wherever I am now, as soon as I click on the bookmark, it will bring me to that level and select the bookmarked node. This works for nearly all nodes, hierarchy nodes, content nodes and layer nodes. Let's select two content nodes, click Add Bookmarks, right click the selection bookmark, and rename the selection to Color Transformer 2. Now you can switch between your bookmarks, save time and be more productive. You can freely reposition this bookmark window. Let's simply drag and drop that to the bottom, to the right, into another window or in the layer panel and so on. Next to the color snooper we have some icons which affect the renderer view. Here you can switch between wireframe, show and hide statistics, input diagnostics, show the bounding boxes, switch to full screen, enable in render edit mode, which is also enabled by the tab key, and show non render objects. Click on show non render objects, and this will show your light ranges, cameras, directional lights, and their directions. Let's open a more simpler scene. What you see here is a point light with a range, represented by a sphere and a plane to mimic the floor. If you have non-render objects enabled, you get a visual appearance of this range as well as all the cameras in the scene. For example, when I now change the range for the light, you can see that also this virtual sphere, this non-render object, is also scaling accordingly to the range of the light. This scene brings us to another new feature of Ventus 5, the in-render navigation or so-called free flight camera. Click in the renderer window and hit the tab key or click the in-render edit mode button. 
When you now Alt and left click in the renderer, you can orbit around an object. Alt and middle mouse button pans the scene, Alt right click zooms in and out, the same for the mouse wheel. With the num keys you can switch through different views and with the zero on the numpad you can switch between the free fly camera and your in-scene camera. You can change the free fly camera behavior by clicking the triangle or down arrow next to the in-render edit mode icon. You have now complete freedom when it comes to changing the layout of Ventus 5. You can rearrange windows and panels, show hide them, let them float around, reposition and dock them into other windows. You simply show a window and drag and drop it anywhere. While you drag a window, these icons represent hints where you can dock the window or panel. You can arrange them wherever you want. You can also stack windows to create so-called tabs. Simply drag and drop a window over another existing window. Let's drag the Live Options window on top of the toolbox. You can now switch between these windows by clicking on the tabs. All of these windows are now more or less borderless. You can still resize the windows by catching the very tiny, thin orange border. That's it for now. See you in the next snippet.